What up? How's it going? First, let me start by saying don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, make sure to hit the notification bell. Shout out to all the new viewers. Shout out to all the subscribers. And I got a Patreon with full-length early reactions to things like this. If you'd like to, check it out. Yo. This season, we're exploring more things. What they did with that last episode wasn't expecting it. So what they've done with the women... For one, you now have Carmella. She's coming to the appointments. You had Dr. Melfi and the rape. Uh, you had uh, Tracy. I believe that was her name. Uh, and they showed Meadow and Caitlin. So they're highlighting the women a lot on this. And I, and I got to say, I haven't read a bunch of stuff on it. But like you hear things and you've, Overheard things like, for instance, I'll give you an example. I've heard about the Columbus Day thing a bunch. I've heard people talk about how bad they think it is and stuff like that. And I've, I've uh, read something like that, but this is a while back. Uh, but the the way that the women are treated by the show now nah, i'm not talking about by the characters on the show but by the show showing that oftentimes uh for one you had like the stripper she was like their fodder right like they're just thrown out there to the wolves and all that do you got somebody like meadow and carmella who are within tony's actual media family and then you have his sister you you know what i mean the <clears throat> as i'm thinking about it and talking this this is something that's very important on this show also. And they're not patronizing women. They're showing how the women would be actually treated in this world. And they found ways to highlight the normalcy, right? You got like Meadow, what she goes through to highlight uh, the, the Guma or the the wife and how they're affected by being so close to him. And then the, the women who are just, you know, thrown to the wolves. So for them to highlight that is important because there was nothing where they do. My issue with today is they do things where they, they assume that we're going to appeal to women by showing them be empowered. Okay. Makes sense. But they'll do it in portions and parts where it's like that didn't go with the story. So in this story, we see a professional woman like uh, Dr. Melfi, and we see what happens to, to her. Now, we're going to see where they take that with the story, because right now it doesn't have anything to do with Tony and stuff. Then we got somebody like Carmella, who's, oh, she's a stay-at-home mom, but at any moment, do we think she's weak? She's a stay-at-home mom, for real. Worried about the family. She's like Ray Romano's mom in the, I'm not saying they're one-to-one -one comparison what i'm saying is in the amount that she cares about that family it's like right but do we see her being weak do we see her being uh fake strong right when tony hurts her he really hurts her we see meadow they treat her as an actual child not this you know she screamed and just ran up to her room and that was the end of it. Remember, I, I highlighted that because over here, that was a trope. It's like the teenage girl. She just screams and runs up to her room and that's it. With Meadow, they've gone deep. And then to show like Caitlyn and then what we saw with that last episode where this chick just got beat and it, it, nothing's going to come of it. I'm assuming nothing's going to come of it. She was just another pawn, right? So for what they're doing on this show, it's to the point where at no point am I going, damn, well, what about the women? And at no point... Is it this thing of, okay, you're just pushing it. It's out of the ordinary. All of this made sense. And what that lets me know is they aren't playing catch up like a lot of these uh, forms of media are. You could tell they were doing something and then someone came along and said, well, what about women? On this, they started from the beginning knowing, okay, no, these, these women have important roles in this. We're going to highlight. We're going to show, right? Where a lot of stuff, it's like, oh, no, we're going to highlight. Remember <laughs> uh, in Endgame, with all the women just standing? It, you could tell it was like, oh, shit, uh, it's Me Too movement's going on. We got to. 
that's not what this was. The, they came from the beginning. Like we're going to show all the humans as humans. I appreciate that. Right? Like that's how it's done. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and start this. Right? Like for instance, his sister. I can openly talk about her being a scumbag and a hater and a, and a bitch and a cunt. And no one has called me out on it. Why? Because everyone feels that way. And they also have the other representation where, so when you hear me saying that, you understand I'm saying it not because she's a woman. I'm saying it because <laughs> that's what she is. All right. So let's go to start this episode. Man, you know, I could talk about this show a lot. So let's go to start it. Mr. Soprano, someone here to see you. God damn, he looked like Larry Day. You don't <clears> hear <throat> you, Hector, me. The director has authorized us to make you an offer. You have your nephew, Tony. Cooperate fully. Help take him down. What do I get? Guaranteed cure. No more cancer? Not a single disease. A dream. Cell. Based on the preliminary results of the frozen section, and depending, of course, on the full path report... Is it, it clean, Enlo, or not? Yes, it's clean. Watch and learn, Miles. You did very well. The news is all good. Beautiful. So the cancer is... Gone? You bet. It took a tumor the size of a fist out of his stump. Oh, my God. Michael thinks the world of you. And uh, if there's ever anything I can do, a favor, anything... Oh, shit. Let me know. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Soprano. I don't know what Tony was expecting there. Hey, I fucking won, Paulie. It's only right you pay me. And for other things, too. Dom Perignon for everybody in the skybox at the garden the other night. Check comes, suddenly you're MIA. You're too fucking worried about what I give you. <laughs> Worry a little more about what you give me. Blow me with your lectures, Paulie. Kid, you waving a wire? You fucking crazy? That's what. Let him down. He fucking touches me. That make it easy on us all. Take him off. Everything. Why they? <laughs> New York reopened the books, but they also laid it down. Probationary period. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. When I was coming up, this would never happen to new made guys. But too many people are doing a simulcast. Well, maybe you, you fuck. <laughs> Do me a favor. And don't take it personal. I said everything. Go fuck yourself. Before I was breaking balls. Now you're beginning to worry me. I guess you could call that a dick. Paulie, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> asshole. Tony. What? The Washington trip. Oh, you're going to be on that school bus to DC tomorrow. You're all packed and paid for, and you're going to pay attention. You're going to learn something for a change. We're going to FBI headquarters. So? <laughs> This boy tried to get out of it by invoking the F FBI. Fuck. The man's got two speeds, moping or yelling when he's here. He's got an uncle sick with cancer. Oh, please. They didn't speak for a year. We've been seeing his therapist together. What? Right. Like what? He's no Angelo Stanford, that's all. What is that supposed to mean? You know Angela was dying to marry you. And now, She's Stanford still is a chain of drugstores. So what, he doesn't up. need therapy? Or maybe you forgot Dad's little strip mall on Route 17 was zoned residential until Tony made a phone call. Bullshit. Oh, really, Dad? Oh, please, my heart bleeds. What, the waters don't part for you wherever you go? I earn it. You two get a free pass. I wanna This is going to reignite, you know. Anyway. Yeah. Four dollars a pound. As soon as that thing turned, I was like, yeah. I saw it at Rite Aid. They were selling them. What? What did you say? Fucking oh. 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 I pay you a fucking salary. Oh, come on. Look, it's not like this when me and Tony are here together. You never give him the silent treatment. Is that what you think? I'm giving you the silent treatment? Maybe you could tell me why you came today. I'm worried about my husband. The mood swings. I thought, uh, you know, when his mother died, maybe, but uh, still half the time he doesn't even talk to me. I know that uh, he is your patient and I am only the patient's wife, but you try living with that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, see how you feel. Fuck that shit, I think he said, okay? Usually happens when we touch on a nerve. He was distressed about this young man's death in the garbage compactor. See? He didn't say garbage compactor, did he? What is it you believe? You know about his job. He reports to a strip club. Who knows how he spends his days? I think coming to therapy with him has stirred up a lot of feelings in you that you would like to address with somebody. I am not the one who needs mental help. I just needed to vent. 
In case you change your mind, here's a number of a colleague in Livingston. See, I <clears throat> pointed this out a while back. Her way of trying to help herself is she utilized the church. And then that sort of failed her. And then she'll utilize the family. But the family continues to fail her. <laughs> and when I say fail her, I mean in helping her through. She seems to be able to handle the kids leaving. Like, right? It's Tony. And she's coming up to that realization like, oh, shit. Me and this guy are going to be alone together soon. Is this almost done? Right? Like, she, she's faced with those facts. Yeah, she should probably go and talk to somebody. But she she thinks above about herself above that. Right? Like I said, she, it, she thinks she's helping everyone else. That really won't be necessary, but thank you anyway. See? The fact that she just will outright reject thank it. Thank you for the time. She going to use the shit out of that. We took a small sampling of the tumor from the frozen section. When we got back the complete results, it showed nodal involvement. So what do we do next? It's called amended surgery. Oh, Jesus. Any questions? When can he eat regular food again? I'd guess two weeks. So let's fill out the surgical consent form, son. That's one less thing you have to deal with in the hospital. Take all the time you need to read them. How do I know what nodal involvement means? Well, didn't you fucking listen? A whole issue of U.S. news on seniors and health. Bring somebody with you to the doctors, it said. Somebody to ask questions. You ask one dumb <laughs> fucking question about my diet. <laughs> Why don't you come for dinner? It's just me and Tony. We've mm. met at school. AJ's on a field trip. Who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and Tony won't show. <laughs> <laughs> Pussy ain't show. It's an insensitive joke, Carmella. I mean helps out and I am so grateful I, it covers the basics but anything extra there's no way Carmilla jeez oh, Angel I'm sorry that, that must be so tough yo they're all yours baby and they're from next season you can't even buy them yet yo <laughs> what size are these ten ten that's Sasquatch size Christopher I'm well, an eight and a half well stuff some goddamn newspaper uh, in it now what happened? I have to give them all back? <laughs> Temporarily. I'll get you eight and a half tomorrow. But since you've been, you know, in, I just can't believe the stuff we get. It's so great. <laughs> Except for that Spock Cone Paulie. Fuck him and the Coupe de Ville he rode in on. You saying you hold him back again? Well, like I'm gonna give that prick a full share? The biggest issue with that is they're made, they, they, they gotta buy by rules, but when it comes to the money, everybody greedy. And you can see that's how a lot of this shit, the downfall happens. Now everything's cold. Oh, that's why they invented microwaves. For inconsiderate husbands. It's just that since we're alone, it would be nice to have dinner together. All right, don't bust my chops, Carmel. I got a lot on my mind. You see what I mean? They're about to live alone for the rest of their lives. And she's like, how's this going to go? Like, I'm having lunch with our daughter's dean tomorrow. I gather you won't be joining me. We already shall have 40 grand a year to those people. It's well spent. She's really learning. She's out on her own. And if she passes us by... If she did that when she was 14. Isn't that what you want for your kids? No. I want to be backwards and ignorant and sit around with their thumb up their ass. That's funny, right? Interesting. But I feel like <laughs> if it's up to Tony's mom, right? That's what she would want. <laughs> she, the fact that Tony was successful in any way. She's like, ugh. That's who I ran into at the supermarket today. Angie Bumpincero. Her dog is sick. What's wrong with him? Her. Osteoporosis. Angie needs money for an operation. We'll take it up with pussy. If you can find a fat fuck, wherever the feds put him. He left Angie holding in the bag, which is not right. He ratted us out, Carl, me and you. And that's where he is. And I don't want to hear about him ever again. Or his ungrateful cunt wife. His what wife? The Berezovsky brothers jacked the shipment from Milan off Pier 87. These are for aid. Nice goods. My Broadway's a size 10. Patsy, pack up some of these shoes. Chrissy, you don't mind if I take my taste now. He's not taking those. Make yourselves comfortable. But just have a little look around. Motherfucker. <laughs> That's what people used to have to do back then. Now, you would just call their cell phone and still not get them. Meadow, didn't you hear me knocking? Sleeping. I thought it was Vanessa. So, uh, how was the drama queen doing anyway? Fine. Can we not talk about this, please? 
The real reason I stopped by to see you, though, was to make sure you're recovered from this Noah thing. I'm worried it'll affect your grades. You call losing a wonderful man because of Dad a thing? Because you certainly kept seeing him plenty long enough after that business exactly. with your father. Look, don't drag me into whatever bullshit, accommodational pretense you got worked out with Daddy. What was that, last night's reading assignment? <laughs> Let's hear it. What's your big theory about me and Daddy? No way. Please, please, please let Meadow do this. God damn. <laughs> when they say you're getting real food. Who knows? Kennedy's put me under a knife again. Oh, back up. More surgery? Don't you think you should talk to somebody else, you know, get a second opinion? Chemo? Forget it. With Kennedy, it's cut, zip, over and out. And don't forget his name. What? I'm supposed to be impressed because the man's name is John Kennedy. All the mixed name their kids that after the guy got killed. <laughs> I love that man. He was older than me, and now look. You were gone a long time. How many White Castle did you have? I didn't, I swear. <laughs> I can smell I them. swear. I swear. That Tony means Cole stay doing that shit. He knows doctors in this city. He sent Silvio's mother to one. Can't hurt to make a call. People come from the city to see Kennedy. Good, then we won't be fighting traffic. Uncle Junior, you know I'm right. He's right, cuz I watch Scrubs, right? I'm an expert on this. Uh, <laughs> but <clears throat> surgeons think surgery is the answer. <laughs> like, like there's surgeons. My nephew thinks I need a second opinion. He doesn't like it that I'm going back under the knife. Maybe there's something to that. Oh, not an expert heard from. Think on this, burger boy. Anthony is a cunt here away from owning all of Northern Jersey. And I am that cunt here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I maybe he has that. something I else see. on his mind beside my full, complete, and speedy recovery. Ah, uh, Junior, all this cynicism. This can't be good for you. <laughs> you speak Italian. Second generation. Really? Ross? Rosetti. A thousand years of a proud name undone with one stroke of a pen at Ellis Island. Mm. A paisan. Not far from you either. I don't know her personally. But I've talked to her professors. They say she's attentive, What's inquiring, does minute. all her work, Wait and makes insightful contributions to class discussion. Any kind of problem you got, financial or otherwise, you know, you come directly to me. Then I saw the Cadillac. The money I give you, you're driving a Cadillac and you're looking for more? You see my wife. You talk about oven cleaner. Anything else, you come to me. But think twice before you do. Think about that fat fuck husband of yours and what he did to you. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> she don't look sick. It comes and goes. Oh. Oh. And I fuck with how he handled it. Yeah, turn up, Tony. He came over there. He was like, I was wondering how I was going to handle it. And then I saw a fucking Cadillac in your goddamn driveway. A brand new shit, too. I'm looking at that shit. Paint job shiny.